Hi, I'm Chef Gail Sokol and welcome to my kitchen. I'm very excited today because we're going to be making a Boston cream pie. And I want to give you a little history about the Boston cream pie because it's not a pie at all. It actually originated in the 1880s in the Parker House Hotel in Boston, Massachusetts. And it exists to this day, both the hotel and the Boston cream pie is served there. And I've had it there and it's spectacular. And I think mine is going to be just as good. So a little history about the Boston cream pie. It is called a pie because it was probably baked in a pie tin because way back in the day, they didn't have a lot of cake pans. So they usually use pie tins. So it's an old riff on the uh, pudding cake as they used to call it. And that's what it is. It's a butter cake, one layer butter cake that's split in half. And then a vanilla pastry cream goes in the middle and then a beautiful chocolate glaze goes on top. I can't wait to get started. So the first thing I did is preheat my oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and I prepped my pan. I have a nine inch cake pan. I have sprayed it with nonstick cooking spray. I've lined it with a parchment cake circle. And if you wanna see a great video, go to my YouTube channel because I have a great video on how to make uh, a parchment cake circle and how to get your cake out. Then you spray that parchment cake circle again with nonstick cooking spray, flour the whole thing, dump the excess out uh, in the garbage or the sink, and leave it, and you have a prepared pan, guaranteed to have your cake come out. So the next thing I've done is, I have one and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, and a half a teaspoon of salt. And I'm going to whisk those together. Remember, I'm a real stickler about getting everything in its place, that mise en place. And when you whisk all this together, it gets your salt and your chemical leavener completely mixed in with all the dry ingredients and ensures that that cake is going to have a wonderful crumb, a fine crumb, no holes in it, and it's going to be very delicate and yummy. All right, so I'm gonna put that aside. Now, over to my mixer. I have one cup of granulated sugar. I'm gonna be putting in five tablespoons and a teaspoon of softened, unsalted butter. And we're going to cream this. This is known as the creaming method of mixing. And I've done this before. You cream your granulated sugar with your butter. This is not going to be as creamy uh, and light and fluffy as normal because there's not as much butter to sugar ratio. So your butter should start turning white. So you're gonna keep that going. Come on, take a look at it. Come on over and take a look at my mixer. So this is what it's gonna look like. Your butter's gonna get slightly aerated and the sugar is forcing air into that butter. Once you let that go for a short time, you're gonna take one large egg, and that's the whole egg. And you don't wanna rush the creaming mixture either, but you're gonna add the egg all at once. All right, and you're gonna see it come together. See how it looks sort of nice and creamy and you see the sugar in there and the butter and it's all blended it's getting all jiggy together and it looks really good all right and we can beat it a little bit more vigorously now there's no flour in it to develop any gluten uh and which will would make it tough if we over mix of course you want some gluten production because uh you want to have some structure to your cake so now we're gonna put it on low speed and this is exactly what a creaming method of, mi of mixing is. And you take your dry ingredients and we're gonna add one third of those, just eyeball it, on low speed. If you don't do it on low speed, you're gonna be wearing it all over you. I've been there and I've done it. So you take about one third of your dry ingredients, blend it in, take a look at it, it's going to look a little dry. You're going to see it's going to get thick. 
Now, I have three, cup, three quarters of a cup of whole milk. You can use skim if you'd like. You can use any type of milk you want. And I put a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract in it. That's why it looks like that. I'm going to add half. Just half. I'm going to mix that at a slightly higher speed. Once you start adding flour, you don't want to get too high. And if it ever starts sticking to the sides of the bowl and you want to get a creamier texture, stop your machine and scrape it down with your rubber spatula. Your handy rubber spatula. Scrape it off the paddle. Whoop. All right. Put that back on. I'm going to try not to make a lot of noise. So you're going to alternate now. So we just added half of the milk. Now we're going to add another one third of the flour. All right. Again, we're alternating dry and wet ingredients. That's very, very typical of the creaming method of mixing. Try saying that real fast. It's not, it's not easy. Now I'm going to add the remainder of my milk and vanilla. Okay. And then once that gets incorporated, we're going to finish with our flour. Okay, so flour goes in, the remainder. Boom. Just going to turn it up just a hair just to get everything blended, and I'm going to stop. Now, what you're going to see is, because I don't want to overmix at this point because there is some flour, you can see it looks beautiful. It's creamy, it's light, and yes, there is some flour around the outside. So we are going to take our, our beautiful rubber spatula, my favorite tool, and we're going to take this bowl and go around it because there's always dry ingredients on the bottom of an electric mixing bowl, always. So you just want to go around, all right? I don't want to get in the way of you seeing it, but it's a beautiful batter, really nice. So we're going to come on over here. We have our prepared cake pan. It is lined, it is sprayed, it is floured. We're good to go. This is our insurance that our cake is going to come out. I have never had a problem when I've prepared a cake pan properly. I'm just going to pour this in. And then I'm going to show you a trick I bet you never knew. You know how you get these humps and you get a cake that sort of looks like a camel? You know, it's got that hump in the middle. Well, I don't want to make a cake with a hump in the middle. Guaranteed never to happen. Get an offset spatula. See how it's in here? Offset spatula and just spread it around a little, right? No great shakes right now, right? Now watch, put that rubber spat, not rubber spatula, the offset spatula, put it on the edge as if it is a hand of a clock and you're gonna rotate it. Can you see me? And you're gonna rotate it. So just drag, and you don't wanna overwork this, but you're gonna drag your batter. See what I've done? You're gonna drag your batter around so that that hand of that clock is going all the way around. Boom, you're done. See how smooth and flat that is? That cake is not going to be a camel, okay? 35 minutes at 350 degrees or until a sharp, small knife inserted in the center comes out clean. So I'm gonna put it in my middle rack and it will need about 35 minutes. Put it in the middle, the center, all right? All right, now, I have made one already. So let me clean up just a tad, get all my raw ingredients off of my hands so we don't cross contaminate. I have a cake already baked that I have split in half. So that's half. This is the top. I'm going to take 
my ganache or my, my you know my chocolate uh, icing on top or my chocolate glaze and I'm gonna put it into the microwave for a little while I made it earlier and it's perfectly fine half a cup of heavy cream I've made ganache a gazillion times I have a YouTube video on how to make it as well and it's half a cup brought to a simmer in a small saucepan remove it from the heat add one cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips and whisk until the chocolate has melted. This is half the recipe that I usually make because we only need it to go over the top. I'm gonna to microwave it just so it gets a little bit looser. Probably about 10 seconds. Vanilla pastry cream which I also have a YouTube video for that you can look up. Super simple, super easy. And remember, when you make a vanilla pastry cream, you always put plastic wrap or wax paper on the top because there's that protein layer from the milk called casein. And that can actually form a skin. So let me get more accoutrement too, so we can fill and ice and frost. This is the fun part, folks. So I'm gonna take my pastry cream, which gets very, very firm, and you just wanna get that softened a little bit. I made this few hours ago. Look how beautiful that is. It's lovely. And it's an easy video. It's an easy recipe if you want to watch that and make that. It's beautiful. And you don't want to put it into onto the cake when it's warm. You want to make sure it's cold. All right, so I've divided my cake in half. And if you notice, this is my serving platter, but I always put it on a cardboard cake circle. Uh, cut to fit just in case I want to remove it off of the serving platter or give it as a gift You never know or bring it to someone's house right So I'm going to put this on top This lovely pastry cream It's going to be even better Than the Boston Park Plaza Hotel mm. So good a larger offset spatula. Oh, is that good? And we're just gonna spread. Just spread it. This is super simple. See, this is the pudding part because a pastry cream is really a pudding. It's a stovetop custard or a pudding. That's why it's a riff on an old time pudding cake. Okay, see what I've done? And if you wanted to be creative and do something different, I mean, you could put some berries on here or whatever you wanted, but not necessary. And then I'm going to take my top layer and just slide it on the top. Yo, -ho -ho, look at that. How gorgeous. And it doesn't have to be beautiful because you're going to have that pastry cream oozing off a little bit. Are we level? All right. And then you're going to take your beautiful, beautiful, beautiful chocolate glaze, otherwise known as ganache, and I'm going to put it on top. Oh, remember, this is only half the recipe that I have on the YouTube video. So this is the half a cup of cream, one cup of semi-sweet chocolate, because that's all you really need, right? And if some drips over the sides, so be it, okay? All right, so let me go get another offset spatula. So many offset spatulas in so little time. All right, so I'm just gonna just sort of shush it around a little bit, spread it around. You don't necessarily have, you know, have to have it go over the sides. It's not supposed to cover, but it just can, Dribble a little bit. And we're gonna add a little something extra on the top. I gotta give you my riff on it, right? So it's not gonna be exactly like the Boston Park Plaza, although they do do something similar to this. 
So once you have your icing or your glaze, whatever you want to call it, sort of spread, and I'm just giving it a little bit sort of over the edge, sort of like a lemon, sort of like, go ahead, and then let it drip over the edge. All right, see that? I'm gonna take some white chocolate that I've melted. All right, I have that over here. And I made a parchment cone. And I have a YouTube video on how to do that as well. I'm gonna pour, I put it into a cup and I'm going to, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. You have to do this before the glaze hardens because it will harden in the fridge. You're gonna pour this in. Okay. We're gonna see, you can make some, some designs. I'm just gonna cut off a little end here with my scissors just so it opens up and makes the hole a little bit bigger. And I have a big toothpick and I'm just gonna go around. Okay, I make concentric circles. They don't have to be perfect, but concentric circles. If you wanna make lines, you can also make lines. Okay? Now what you're gonna do is take your, your poker and you're just gonna go back. Almost like a spider webby thing going on. Pretty, huh? So, you know what, I mean, this is gorgeous, it's simple, and it is loaded with pastry cream. It's not that rich, but it is certainly spectacular. So I hope you've enjoyed my riff on the Boston cream pie, and I hope you become a subscriber. I've had a lot of fun today. Hope you have too. Till next time.